G'day folks, it's time to revisit a project that I haven't touched in quite some time. It's the Westinghouse DC generator. I've had this for quite a while and when I first got it and got it apart, I didn't have much equipment to work on it. Um, now things have improved a lot, I've got better equipment, I've got motors and things like this to do what I originally intended, which was spin this up out of the, out of the housing and uh, polish the combars, all that sort of stuff, clean it up. Um, yeah, and I've got better cabling, I can rewind it properly, well not rewind it, but connect the brushes properly. Um, I still don't have insulation for these, but being 110 volts, I could probably make something up anyway. We'll see how well we go with that. But yeah, the brush holders, brush box assemblies have to fit over these steel stubs here. So that's going to be the hardest part. The other hard part is understanding my old drawings, because they're not very clear. I'm sure there's probably even a better way of winding one of these today, but I'm pretty sure it's all just series wound through the fields and then through the uh, armature. Four brushes, four fields. So all I'm doing now is just running it off a three-phase motor, nice and slow. I've already polished the bearing journals. A bit of oil on there, friction modifier. Um, yeah, nothing much I can really do apart from uh, polish the commutator. Even as slow as it's going, I can still feel air coming out through the uh, centre of the rotor. It acts like a uh, squirrel cage fan. Barely a vibration, and most of that will be from that pulley, which is actually, the bore is too big for the shaft. So that pulley is running on eccentric, but this, this thing is barely moving at that speed. That's a really well balanced rotor, as I'd expect from Westinghouse, 1920s, 1930s Westinghouse. This is one of the only uh, stepped flat belt pulley that I was able to salvage off the uh, 1937 German made drill press, the old Hill Record, made in Dresden, 1937. I bet you those uh, machine works didn't survive the war. Dresden was pretty much bombed to rubble. So that's probably one of the last remaining parts I've got apart from the name plates and one of the, uh, the 1943 Morelli Italian made motor that was fitted to it during the war. It came out of a Bosch Magneto and ignition plant. But yeah, that's working quite well. Spitting out air through the slots, particularly the centre of it, and then the air just moves outwards. There's a little oil slinger thing brazed onto it there. I'm impressed. And it's running at 50 hertz. So the motor's doing 1400 RPM. That road is doing pretty much as many RPMs as it wants to in the housing. Its maximum speed's about 800 revs. And at light load, you generally won't even have to spin it that fast. So that's about as fast as it's going to go. If you overspeed these in a critical way, the commutators do explode. So, yeah, don't do anything silly if you do find one and play around with it. But that's safe, plenty safe for what this thing is. Well over-engineered. Old George Westinghouse knew how to design equipment. And I bet you George Westinghouse had a, well, was probably the key designer of this unit considering how old it is. Yeah, shunt wound, 110 volts direct current, 16.5 uh, amps. Oh, sorry, no, amps, 50. Yeah, 110 to 165 volts, 50 amps, uh, 300, sorry, 800 RPM, serial number 815451. And uh, yeah, looking at the details from these and the distributor AP Sutherland. It puts this thing in the 20s or 30s era. It came off Phillip Island. It was one of the it was the communications centre backup generator as well as lighting generator. A good friend of mine who re rebuilds electric motors actually saw this while it was still in its enclosure when he was very young. Uh, it was 
driven by a three cylinder Gardner diesel, two or three cylinder Gardner diesel. And I actually know the guy who has the Gardner diesel that drove this generator. So I'm sure for enough money I could even get him to part with it, but I don't have room for a very large diesel engine at the moment. But eventually I would like to pair it back up with the old Gardener. And as you can see, the com bars should clean up pretty well. There's a few little nicks and scratches in them. There's a bit of a scratch down there, but that'll come up quite nice. It's wire wound. All these. This is a steel or coated steel wire, uh, or copper, maybe tinned copper wire that's been wound around it and then brazed over with lead. It's one solid armature. It ain't going to come apart. Well, that has to be the most glazed commutator I've ever encountered. I mean, I was spinning that thing up pretty fast and hitting it with some glass paper and everything and it hasn't broken the skin apart from where I originally tried it. I think I used emery cloth. It's tough. It's been out in the weather for a very long time. <coughs> and I'm making a lot of dust in the process, which probably isn't good for me. Oh well, something's got to kill you. <laughs> yeah, I'll get through that skin. There's a bit there starting to show up. I see a lot of green as well. Because this was out in the weather for quite a while. Half the housing was full of compost. It'd be interesting to see if it still generates. If it doesn't, well, it's no big loss. I haven't spent any real money on it apart from buying it. I think at the time, my motor price was pretty low. I think I only paid about $120 for it. Going by estimated weight. But yeah, not a bad thing. <laughs> oh, that's looking better. Also had a friend pop over to pick up the batteries that I got him. Came out of that 40 kVA, um, three phase UPS. But he walked into the yard wondering what the cabinet was all about and his jaw hit the floor when I told him that's what the batteries came out of. <laughs> it's pretty decent. So yeah, 400 pounds of the 600 pounds of batteries are gone now. He's only got a uh, it was a pretty decent four-wheel drive, but the back of it was already half full with stuff, so there's four of them still here. We'll pick them up early next year. We've got a Hyundai Terracan CDI, which is basically a um, 2.7 litre um, Korean diesel engine, very good, strong one, and a uh, clone of a Mitsubishi Pajero, except built properly that time. I'd actually own one, but they're very rare and actually probably worth as much as they were new than they are second-hand. They're a very sought after diesel four wheel drive and very well made. Anything new, Hyundai and uh, Kia is actually coming up in the ranks. So, yeah, playing around with technology, chin wagging, and uh, I did get the commutator polished up. I had to grab lots of the uh, glass paper and run it lengthways and break down that oxide layer and then spin the thing for a while and just carefully buff it off with finer and finer grades and I'll just do a final pass and polish it and that'll be it. So yeah, com, com bars are done. I'm going to finish polishing some of these uh, bearing journal uh, uh, surfaces but it's pretty much scored as it is. Tolerances aren't too far out. I'm not going to put new, try and make new bronze bearings for it. I think they're actually cast in like Babbitt bearings so I'm not even going to mess around with that. I'm going to polish this up, get rid of some more of the rust, and we'll be done. Nice to see the uh, oil additive stain in there. I couldn't find any gear oil, so that's what I used. Kind of snake oil to some people, but to be honest, that's actually worked quite well, because it is stuck to all of these surfaces, even though most of it's soaked into the rag. It's pretty good. I think it's like moly denim disulfide additive or something, so... Molly tech stuff's been around for ages. Oh, for the first time in a couple of years, the shaft is back where it belongs. <laughs> All I did was take a piece of uh, MIG wire, pick the oil rings up and drop them on top of the uh, centre divider. Slung the rotor up with a bit of uh, seatbelt webbing. I put the sling about three quarters of the way down and stabilised this end with my hand, slid it in until most of it was resting on the field poles, took the sling away and slid it home. Perfect. 
getting the brush boxes back on or the brush assemblies back on might be a bit tricky though so I'll see how I go with the rotor in at the moment if I can't I might slide the rotor back a bit and endeavor to do the, ro the brush assemblies uh, otherwise I'll probably put the uh, drive end bell housing back on and take this one off and then redo the brush assemblies because I have a feeling that's going to be crucial to it Either way, it can be dismantled now that the rotor's in there. It's easy enough. I just won't fill the uh, bearing housings completely full of oil. I'll just dribble enough in there to keep it happy for now. But yeah, it should be pretty good. It's a nice heavy little unit. <laughs> Well, this is what people wanted to see quite some time ago. I've actually got it back together again. Still a lot of fit and finish to do. Clean up bolts and things. I'm going to give this whole thing another overspray because the outer housing is a bit nasty at the moment. There's a lot of dirt on it as well. It's been sitting too long. But it's all there. Um, just sprayed it with a bit of inox down inside the bearing housing so the rotor bearings are happy at the moment. Spins pretty free. It's a nice heavy rotor though. Must weigh about 150 pound, 75 kilo. Yeah. I'll probably have to take this end bell off again to uh, set the brushes and everything, but that's easy enough. Plus I've still got some connections to make, so. Nice and open and easily serviceable. There's a lot of wiring to do. That's the hard part, working out how to rewire this thing. I don't really understand my own diagrams and that's never a good thing but it's all a learning curve so yeah nice old machine um, that's about all for part one we'll have a bit of a look later on thanks for watching and yeah it's not small <laughs> it's a normal ATX computer power supply about 300 watts and there's a good size comparison.